Hi, hello. My name is Beth, and this is Rad Art, a show where I pick someone out of pop culture who I think is clever. Tell you why I think they're clever. And then I draw them, and I try a different technique just about every single time. Bit of a rehash this week. I've done this before, but I haven't done this in its purest form. I'm doing pointillism. Last time I did pointillism, I did a fictional character, and I did her in a very anime style. So we're just gonna stick to straight, straight up normal, <laughs> no, normal face people. And this week, let's talk about a gay icon. We're gonna do Ellen DeGeneres. Here's a tiny teaser of how she looks all dotted up, and if you like that, stick around, come watch watch it with me. We're gonna have a round of fun time. I'm so tired. Ellen DeGeneres is a comedian, television host, actress, writer, and producer who's currently dominating the talk show circuit and your mother's living room. Ellen Lee DeGeneres was born just outside New Orleans, Louisiana in 1958. Her and her brother moved around a lot because of their father's work, so she was always the new kid in school. From a young age, Ellen used humor to connect to others, and when she was 13 and her parents had a divorce, Ellen used that knack on her mom, keeping her smiling through the hard times. After graduating high school, Ellen attended the University of New Orleans for a year before going on a journey of odd jobs, bouncing from clerical work to waitressing, painting houses, bartending, J.C. Penney's, TGA Fridays. Her early 20s were a blur of indirection. In that time, she met and moved in with Kat Perkoff, who was her first significant girlfriend. I should mention that Ellen DeGeneres is gay, and for me, a millennial who grew up in a post-Ellen America, this fact is not remarkable, but it would become groundbreaking in the 80s. Back to our story, though. With Kat's encouragement, Ellen began writing comedy essays in the hopes that they would be published in National Lampoon. Her friends thought her writing was funny, and through them, she began performing at small clubs and coffee shops. Ellen had found something to focus on, but as things took off with comedy, Ellen and Kat began fighting. They split up, and shortly thereafter, at a concert put on by Ellen's brother's band, the two saw each other again. Kat was eager to repair the relationship and asked Ellen when she was going to move back in, and even though Ellen intended to rekindle their romance, she wanted to prolong the fight, thereby pretending not to hear her over the music. Kat left before her that night, and while driving home, Ellen saw a car split in two on the side of the road. The next morning, she received a call that Kat had died in said car accident, and upon hearing that, Ellen was forever changed. She would lie on her mattress, which was on the floor of a studio that sat in the basement of an apartment building. The room was so small you couldn't stand up, and it was infested with fleas. Ellen remembers thinking, It just seems so ridiculous that this 23-year-old girl who I was just living with is gone, and fleas are here. I thought it would be great to just pick up the phone and call up God and talk about this. Ellen then put pen to paper and wrote A Conversation with God. Six years later, she performed said conversation on Johnny Carson's The Tonight Show and was the first female comic to ever be invited to sit at his side after her act, one of the highest honors a comic from the 80s could receive. Ellen is somehow able to turn devastation into comedy in a way that respects what has happened instead of mocking it. Her charm and intellect shine through everything she does, and through hard work, Ellen earned her stripes. She was never a viral sensation, but instead a slow-rolling success. She guest starred on shows in the 90s, Open House, Lori Hill, and even had a part written for her in ABC's These Friends of Mine. Ellen literally stole the show, and the second season of These Friends of Mine was renamed Ellen, and the ratings shot through the roof. She was likened to Seinfeld, and her sitcom success culminated on Ellen on April 30th, 1997, with the season 4 episode named The Puppy Episode, when both Ellen Morgan the character and Ellen DeGeneres the actress publicly came out of the closet. In her words, I decided that this was not going to be something I was going to live the rest of my life being ashamed of. Despite fears that, quote, if they found out I was gay, maybe they wouldn't applaud, maybe they wouldn't laugh, maybe they wouldn't like me if they knew, she still did it. And although she won an Emmy for the episode, her goal was to do it for representation. The LGBT community in the 90s was in need of a more visibly successful role model, and Ellen was perfectly poised to be that. That being said, coming out for Ellen was a career risk. This was the first time we would have a main character in a network television show be openly gay, and not only was the concern how would the audience react, but also how would the advertisers react, and advertisers reacted negatively. Pressured by religious organizations all around the country to pull support for the show, companies that would years later ask Ellen to be their spokesperson pulled their financial support for the network and ABC canceled Ellen in its fifth season after having to run a there might be themes that are inappropriate for children warning before each episode. Her open sexuality was both celebrated and also used against her and her career drove to a stop in 1998. 
the media wreaked havoc on her relationship and her mental state, and so she returned to her roots, doing stand-up, and slowly, over the next five years, came back into the limelight, and in 2003, launched The Ellen DeGeneres Show, which quickly became her most successful commercial endeavor. It earned her 11 daytime Emmy nominations and four wins in her first season. It's still running to this day over 14 years later, and she's interviewed everyone, from Alex from Target to Barack Obama. She's adored for her performance as Dory in Finding Nemo, and she's a judge on American Idol. She's a commercial spokesperson for American Express, CoverGirl, and has also headlined the Change Begins Within Gala that the David Lynch Foundation puts on every year. A huge proponent for animal rights, Ellen celebrates veganism, supports the Humane Society. She's a special envoy for global AIDS awareness and is a huge proponent for LGBTQ plus rights, fighting for same-sex marriage legalization even after it was seemingly won. Ellen is named one of Forbes' most influential people in Hollywood and a shining beacon of joy on our television screens. Also, did you know that she's 59 years old? That... she... she's almost 60. That blows my mind. Like this video, subscribe to Snarled if you haven't already, if you like me. Oh my god, there's a cat down there, scare the shit out of me. Check out the description down below for a bunch of fun links to a bunch of snarled stuff, and then while you're down there, leave me a comment with who you want me to draw for the next rad art. It can't be Jasmine though, because we're only babysitting her. We're not gonna have her next week.